Hello and welcome. My name is Seshu and I'm part of DVCom support and training team. In this video, I'm going to show it to you how to configure DHCP and NAT in Sanford Firewall. And before we jump into the configuration, let's go and check what is my laptop policy. In my laptop policy, we have NSF 1050 AI. In my previous video, I showed to you how to configure WAN and LAN jobs. For my WAN, I have configured the IP address as 192. Dot, let me write it for you guys. 192.168.254.15, which is last 24. And my LAN zone, which I configured, 192.168. 100.1 which is last 24 so right now what i'm trying to do now i'm going to configure the dhcp so through the dhcp i can able to assign the ip address automatically all my lan users so that if the lan user if he wants the ip address he can talk to my dhcp server and he can get the ip address so i'm going to enable the dhcp service in my sang for firewall let's go and jump it so let's go and access my firewall open the browser and you are going to access with the default username and password so as you know that in my previous videos i have changed the password and the default username is admin and i changed the different password which is complex password just click on login so once you jump into you need to go to the network then you can see here there is a DHCP. Click on DHCP options. Now you guys can see here there is a click on add. At the moment there is no DHCP services but I am going to configure the DHCP service for my LAN zone. So let's give the name. So I can say LAN. So I am going to specify it as 192.168.100.0. That's the name guys. Then after that, what's the description? This is for my LAN users. Then what's the interface that you are going to use? So I'm going to use, which is ETH2. And by default, you can see it's suggesting that you can go from 100.1 to 100.254. But I want to start from 50. Okay, guys. Then subnet mask is fine and gateway is fine and prefer DNS and alternate DNS. So I'm going to specify the prefer DNS as 4.2.2 and 8.8.8. Okay guys. And also if you guys can see here in the advance. So in case if you want to change the lease time or if you want to add the win server, you can able to do it. And also you guys can see here if you want to add the reservation of any IP address with MAC address, you can do it as well. So I just want to say save. That's it. Now you have configured successfully the DHCP server for your internal subnet, which is 192.168.100.0. Now you guys can see here the status. So right now my PC is connected directly. I mean, I have a demo PC in my lab. So that is directly connected here. I just want to see what is the IP address he got. It. Let's go and keep that PC into the DHCP mode. Okay, let's go and do that. Okay, so I just kept as a DHCP, that's perfectly fine. Just you can refresh it here and you guys can see here. This is the Seishu Mac, that's the name of my host. And he picked the IP address as 100.50 and uh, this is the host name and this is the MAC address. Okay guys, so now you guys can see here, this is what how you are going to enable the DHCP. So in case if you want to configure multiple DHCP subnets, you can just click on add and you can do it. That is the first one. And as I discussed to you, I need to give you natting as well. But I just want to get a bit confusing. So let's do one thing. Let's go and keep my PC also in the DHCP guys. Okay. But I'm going to lose the connectivity here. But keep in your mind, you guys can see here what I'm trying to do now. This is my PC, right? So this PC, what I'm trying to do now, I just want to make it as a, this is my PC guys. I just want to make it as a DHCP. So that once you enable the DHCP, 
I am going to lose the connectivity of my firewall so that I will be here. So I, I'm not going to be here, right? So that I'll be here. So that time what's going to happen? So the challenging is that once you remove that and once you're connecting your PC directly to the LAN port, you are going to get one of the IP address, right? Let's say that is going to get 100.51, right? So now you are part of your LAN zone. So you need to check one important thing for the LAN zone, whether you allow the web UI or not. This is what you need to check. Okay, let's go and do that. Okay, let's go and do that. So first of all, what you are going to do, you just go here, minimize this and open your firewall and you can see here, go to the interfaces and you can see this is my LAN interface. Then click on the edit. So once you reach edit, you need to understand this one. It's very, very important. So make sure that that web UI and ping SNMP and SSH has to be enabled. So very important thing, web UI, web user interface. That's very, very important for us. So now I just want to connect directly here. Let's go and do that. So now I'm going to connect my PC. So right now my PC is connected on the LAN. So let's go and change the settings here. Go to ncpa.cpl. Then it's going to open for you the network settings. Just double click on my LAN and close this guy and you are going to see the MyLAN status. Then click on the properties. So once you go to the properties, go to the TCP IP version 4. Then you can click on the properties. Then after that obtain an IP address automatically. Then click on OK. Now click on close. Now you guys can see here, click on the details. Now I got the IP address as 100.51. OK, 100.50 has taken by my initial PC and this is my PC which I'm right now recording guys from this PC I got the IP address is 100.51 right so now what you are going to do now because why I did this because if you refresh it you can say reload and you are going to lose the connectivity why because I'm not able to get the access because I didn't connect my PC on OOB the management port I just disconnected and I connected directly on the LAN zone so for that, what you have to do, you need to access with the IP address 192.168.100.1 colon 8443. Now you will get access again. Click on advance, click on proceed and enter the username as admin and the password. Say login. So once you get into the login, now you are back to you again. But I just want to get one confused. Am I able to get the internet? Let's see here. This is my command prompt. And if you want to verify the IP address, just type IP config. And what's the IP address, guys? Which is 100.51. But again, who is this IP address? Oh, this is my Wi Fi connectivity. So that if I type ping 4.2.2, I'll get the internet, guys. Type it here. iPhone T 4.2.2. So this traffic is going through my Wi Fi. But my traffic doesn't go my wi-fi traffic doesn't go through my firewall so what i have to do now i need to disable my firewall i mean disable my wi-fi let's go and do that so i'm going to disable as well yeah so my wi-fi is disconnected now you guys can see here i am not getting the internet but my challenge is that i need to give internet access to my lan users so so far i have written the default route it's perfectly fine and uh, I have enabled the DHCP because of that I got the IP address. Now what I want to do now, I need to write the NAT. Let's go and see it. And for the NATing, what you guys has to do, go to the policies. Then after that, you guys can see here there is a NAT. So click on the NAT. So in the NAT, you can see here, click on add. So there is a three type of NATs is there. The first one is source NAT. Second one is destination NAT. And third one is bidirectional NAT. So source NAT is nothing but your source IP address is going to translate with your public IP and it will send it to the internet. So this is called source NAT and destination NAT is nothing but it's a reverse. When the traffic coming from internet, you can able to translate your public IP with your private IP. 
then you can send it to the respective users. You get my point. And bi-directional ad, it's for inbound and outbound traffic. But make sure that mostly we are going to do the source net. Okay, guys. If you are coming from different background from Cisco or something, people they used to say PAT. So port address translation. But here we need to say the terminology called source net. So the source net is nothing but what? So whatever traffic which is coming from your LAN zone, which is 192.168.100.0, right guys? So this is going to come to your firewall. Hey, I want to access the internet. Then if you want to access the internet, then you have a outbound interface which is connected to the internet. What is that? Which is my ETH1 and this is my ETH2. And the IP address which I configured here, 192.168.254.15, right guys? So whenever the traffic is going outside, it's going to use this public IP, okay? But here it's not a public IP, it's my private IP. But usually in real time, you can able to get the public IP from your service provider so that your firewall is going to use this public IP and it will send it to the internet. Okay guys, so whenever you are trying to access any internet in the public network, especially you need to have a public IP. That is the reason it's going to translate your private IP with the public IP and it will send it to the internet. This is very, very important guys. Okay, let's go and do that. So now what I'm going to do now, I just want to show it to you one more thing. Let's keep my ping continuously. Still, I'm not getting guys. Okay, let's minimize this. Now I'm going to select as a source net. I'm going to say LAN to WAN. So I want to write like this. Then after that, enable this and description. Access internet for LAN users through source net. Okay. Then after that, you can see here original data packet so the traffic which is coming from my source zone which is my LAN save and what's your source address so click on this if you select all I don't recommend to do that I want to create a object for my LAN users so for that you can just click on add then after that click on address then after that you can specify LAN and what is that the subnet 192.168.100.0 then after that description, this is my LAN subnet. Then after that, I don't have any address group. I don't want to do that. So now you need to specify here. The protocol is IP version 4 by default it's selected. Now I need to specify the address, which is 192.168.100.0 slash 24. Then after that, you can click on save, then click on OK. Now you can guys can see here the original data packet is ready now. You select it as a source zone and you specify it as a LAN zone. Then what's your destination zone? So my destination zone is my WAN. So through WAN I want to send this information to internet. You guys can see here the beauty of this sang for firewall. You can see here the LAN zone and the WAN zone. You guys understand that? And after that, you guys can see here the destination address where you want to go. I want to go anywhere in the world. Then after that services, any service and outbound interface translated the source IP to your outbound interface, which is whatever you configure it here, which is 254.15. It's going to translate with that and it will send it to the Internet. Then you can click on save. Now, there you go. And you can see here, maybe everybody thinks that I am going to get the Internet now. See, still. I am not getting internet. Why? Why I'm not getting the internet? Still, I have just configured the default route. It's perfectly fine. And uh, after that, what I did, I configured the DHCP. I got the IP address from my DHCP server. And after that, I configured the NAT. So, if you want to get the internet, make sure that you need to write a policy. So once you write the policy, then you can able to get the internet access. So for the policy creation and all, and you guys can see here, there is a hit count is there guys. See what's the beauty of that. It's coming here and it's hitting this. Actually, whatever the net policy which I created here, it's hitting here. And I can able to see number of hits, but still I'm not getting internet. 
I am not getting internet. Why? Because it's very important that you need to create a access policy. So for the access policy that I'm going to show it to you in my next video guys, so that you know, and also I forgot to tell you one more thing guys. So as I told you earlier, this year, there is a Jitex is going to happen in Dubai in October 14 to 18. So you guys can visit for the understand about all your sang for products. So I will be there and I'm going to explain to you what are the security products which sang for is going to offer for the customers. I'm going to show it to you the live demo as well. And for the sales, please send us an email sales at datawise.com for support. Please send us an email support at datawise.com. I hope this has been informative and I would like to thank you for viewing.